It's not often that something comes along offering a genuinely unique spin on a well-established genre, so I was a little excited when I heard about Guardians VR. Offering gameplay that aims to blend the best elements of first-person shooters with real-time strategy, Guardians VR hopes to provide players with a unique tactical action experience. Developers Virtual Age, the team behind the commendable Gladius, have seen fit to trade in their swords and sandals for some high-tech blasters and robot minions for their latest VR title. It's worth mentioning right from the start that Guardians VR is an early access title, which is a relatively new phenomenon for the Quest. For those of you who aren't yet familiar with the term, an early access title is essentially still a work in progress. Generally released at a lower price, developers showcase a game's core elements and offer players an almost finished version which is later finalized based on community feedback. Guardians VR is a great example of this. There is undoubtedly some more work still to be done here, but the bones of something excellent are apparent straight away. After putting numerous hours into the gameplay, I've enjoyed the game on offer now, and I'm looking forward to its ongoing development. Guardians VR is a first-person shooter that also includes strategic resource management and troop deployment elements. This combination of FPS and RTS elements is where Guardians VR really shines. The combat is fun in its own right. Still, the act of balancing between protecting your resources while building up your forces and pushing forward with your objectives is what makes the game so uniquely enjoyable. There is a limited storyline, essentially based around the idea that the player is a guardian, tasked with protecting various automated mining operations on a series of remote planets. Missions progress over three distinct worlds, all overrun with hostile alien lifeforms that give off some severe Starship Troopers vibes. Playing Guardians VR reminded me of two of my favorite flat games from days gone by. The weapons in combat have a familiar Halo feel. This feel will no doubt be enhanced once the Plasma Blade update arrives. Outside of the direct action, the strategic command options and the alien race's aesthetic design clearly take some inspiration from StarCraft. During each mission, the player must switch rapidly between deploying defensive structures and controlling troop actions to jumping into the fray and taking down enemies directly with a range of futuristic weapons. It takes a little getting used to at first, but it's really great twist on a prevalent genre once you do. Missions comprise fairly standard formats, anywhere from payload style affairs where you guard a moving mining unit to straight out wave defense. Resources need to be harvested to purchase troops and defensive structures. The need for these often requires you to venture outside of your comfort zone. While you can play Guardians VR as a straight shooter, I strongly recommend avoiding that urge. The developers have even gone as far as to weight the scoring system to reward tactical play. To get a coveted space on the leaderboard, you will need to be more than just a crack shot. The combat is fast and fun, and the strategic elements are light and engaging. While Guardians VR contains tactical components, make no mistake, this is an action game at heart. The mix of UI systems needed to manage these core components are thoughtfully composed, making blending these playstyles on the fly both intuitive and easy. Menus are well laid out. With a small amount of practice, you can switch between deploying units, building structures, and selecting weapons in seconds. Hotkeys and unit grouping mechanisms are present, allowing you to command your troops quickly and effectively. The map, teleport point system, and jetpack all work together, allowing you to move amongst the action swiftly and react to situations as they arrive. All in all, it's a lot of fun and feels like a fresh way to shoot aliens in VR. Guardians VR hides its early access standing well in most areas, but it does feel like there is a little more work to be done on the graphics department. The visual world of Guardians VR is perfectly acceptable, although a little on the bland side. It would seem that to keep the maps large and open and the bugs fast and flowing, the developers needed to choose a somewhat dreary setting for the action. While this isn't a big complaint, the two worlds available at launch are desert and snow themed respectively and create large expanses of somewhat flat, uniform terrain. It's perfectly functional and it doesn't hinder the gameplay, but is far from stunning. The waves of insectoid aliens are again adequate. 
However, like the environments, you can see where there is still some work to be done. Compared to the assets used in the similarly themed Crashlands VR, enemy animations and terrain textures just seem flat. It would be such a shame to see Guardians VR's fantastic gameplay overlooked just because a prettier equivalent released at around the same time. A few other small visual components require a bit more polish, but nothing close to game breaking. The static loading screen, an oversized image of a cockpit, is probably the most significantly underwhelming asset. Still, I'm sure that this can be addressed easily enough. The audio is relatively good, with meaty sounding zaps and bangs for all the sci-fi weapons and appropriately monstrous screeches when the bugs die. The soundtrack switches from a calm country twang, reminiscent of Joss Whedon's excellent Firefly series, to some more up-tempo electro sounds when the combat gets going. It all works effortlessly, with the sound playing a supporting role to the gameplay, propping it up without being insistent upon itself. Guardians VR launches with both single player and co-op campaign, as well as PvP and PvPVE modes, which will no doubt be the icing on the cake for many. The PvP option consists of three game modes, Deathmatch, Team Deathmatch, and Destroy the Base. I should note that I played before Guardians VR went live on App Lab, and as such, I found the player base a little small. However, when I was able to organize games in advance, it was genuinely enjoyable. There are still a few elements that highlight the early access nature of the game, but overall it's very good. There's still a little bit more work required for the multiplayer experience to feel complete, but after giving our feedback to Virtual Age, I was pleased to find that tweaks and balances for almost all of our concerns were already being addressed. Like the rest of the game, the core elements of something enjoyable and unique are in place, it just needs a little more polish. I was considerably more successful in finding co-op games, largely by virtue of the allow players to join toggle. Thankfully, this meant that there was no need to wait around for players if I didn't want to. I could just jump in and get blasting, and other players could jump into the game at any point throughout. In most cases, I was happily slaying space bugs by myself before I noticed that I had company. At launch, Guardians VR provides two planets to fight your way through, each containing four levels, with a third planet to follow shortly after release. I averaged about 15 minutes per level, so even without the multiplayer, there's a good two to three hours of content here, with more on the way. According to one of the developers, a healthy roadmap of additional content is planned, including new unit types and weapons, interesting new missions, and even a map editor. There was also some discussion of possibly expanding the game to embrace the RTS side of things more fully. Personally, I'm throwing my full support behind that idea. Guardians VR offers a fresh spin on the often tired FPS genre and is a genuinely promising new title for the Quest's unofficial ecosystem. It has an impressive level of finish for an early access release and a well-defined sense of the game it will become. Sure, there are little bits here and there that could use a bit of polish, and the strategy element could definitely be fleshed out some more, but the bones of an excellent game are clearly there. Although the score as it stands might seem a little on the low side, I have high hopes that Virtual Age will deliver on the potential that the early access version shows. If they stick to the promised roadmap for the new content and really focus on the gameplay's StarCraft style strategy elements, I have no doubt the final release will see a higher score. Promising. 7.5. If you're enjoying the channel and would like to keep up to date when new content releases, click the subscribe button now.